Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Enthador. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress version 0.43, and we are the undersea lost library of lost knowledge. And it was bound to happen sooner or later, ladies and gentlemen, but the goblins have discovered us. The real question is, who are they? Are they the goblins of the mangy spider? Or are they a wholly unaffiliated tribe of goblins that we must now contend with? We're in really bad shape because we have dwarves outside. They were collecting wood. For a moment after slaying the giant, I felt safe, which is usually when things start to fall apart. So we've got not only all of our animals outside, and they are not going to escape the goblins, I'm pretty sure. But I'll do my best. So first off, we are going to... Remove the pen and pasture. Now what this will do is it should cause the animals to freak out and run down the hall. Now outside, the dwarves we have are Draconase, who is unassigned. Exasto, who is unassigned, and he's carrying birch logs. And Grimux Onyx Blade, our freaking mayor. Why? Why? Why, mayor? I could have sworn I turned off all of your... Job duties. I. Oh man. Grimmix Onyx Blade. Does he have hauling? He sure does. Oh man. Marcus, you are. You're a genius. Okay. All right. Well, we're probably gonna lose our mayor. We're gonna have to have a new one. That's that's a. Ugh. All right. That would be two of our starting seven who have fallen. But regardless, let's get the. Uh, Let's get the civilians safe, as safe as they can be, anyway. Oh, you know what? Some people gave new squad names that I liked a lot better than this one. I think I'm going to go with Jurists Justicars. I forget who suggested it, but thank you. That was a cool one. Because Jurist, you know, is kind of like a juror, which has to do with the justice system. I don't know where you all are from, but in America, a jurist is somebody who who sits in a jury and they determine the guilt or innocence of whomever is on trial. It's a whole system where we don't allow the judges to make that decision because they are a, that's their job, right? So we, we want just ordinary citizens, ordinary individuals who have no connection whatsoever with the legal system, who as best as possible represent the accused in demographics such that they can get a fair trial by people who are not professional lawyers or whatnot. Anyway, Jurist Justicars. There's still only four of them, and while I feel that they did really well against a giant, I don't see them doing really well against armored and weaponized goblins. Not weaponized, but weapon-carrying goblins in mass. Hopefully it'll be a small little invasion. We'll have to see. But alerts, civilization go to danger. And I'm actually going to see what happens first before I pull up any doors. Alright, so they are... They are taking on our animals. We did lose... We did lose Exasto, unfortunately. He has been found dead. Everybody's canceling things now because they can't go outside. Alright, so all we've lost is Exasto at this point, And some animals. It does look like our mayor has got kind of the jump on him. Gremix, are you okay? Wounds. Yeah, you're a little beat up, actually. What happened to you? I, no, I, I want to see your wounds, if, if I could. He's terrified while in conflict. He is afraid after experiencing trauma. He doesn't feel anything after seeing Moses Catchhopper die. Don't know who that is, or Catchhopper. In the midst of conflict, I laugh in the face of death. No, you're not. You're terrified. It says right there. You're not laughing. His lower body is bruised, his upper leg is bruised, and his guts are bruised. Okay, well, that's... If that is the worst that he suffers, I can deal with that. All right, well, everyone else is in besides him. So let's just hope for the best here. Alright, he's in. Alright. 
So we we have to move fast here. Because we just lost a stray water buffalo cow. Wow, there's a lot of people outside. Why are there... Why are there blue X's on you, Iglaloo? What's your deal? Oh, you're dizzy. Okay, yeah, from the sunlight. Because the whole point of this fortress is everybody's supposed to be underground. So when they go up ground to get wood, they're all freaking out. Now we need to really make it down. We need to, first of all, just like Anvil quested, we're going to need a humongous underground tree growing area. So that means we need at least four levels vertical to grow underground trees because they won't grow. We've, we've tested this and they will not grow unless you have at least four areas vertical. And I want it to be large. So we're going to find a place that is, say, maybe around here, you know, that we can go one, two, three, four, but that won't compete, obviously, with our with our living quarters. I was thinking of having farms down here so that uh, we can like dig it here and have this floodgate lead to the farms, but there's not a whole ton of room, as you can see, down here. This part of the map is pretty developed. And then, of course, it can't go down very far because of this. What I could do is have like a little waterfall area going through here and then start it down here, but we don't know how far this goes before we get to the caverns. So there's a lot we have to do before we can do our underground farms. So that is really unfortunate for us at this time. But everyone made it out. So just to give us some time to catch our breath and prepare, let's pull the lever. I think this is the outer door. I'm pretty sure that's the one. Actually, what am I doing? Let's uh, do this task now, please. And let's see what happens. Come on, animals. All right. They've made it. And it's up. Okay. So we managed to save our mayor, which is important, but also a blue pea something. A blue... Well, it's a girl, so a pea hen, I guess, would have to be. And her right wing is cut open. That's unfortunate. We do have a turkey gobbler. We have a horse full and another horse full. Okay. Did we lose our breeding pair of turkeys? Or did one of the other turkeys make it? Uh, no, it appears we are now only down to one turkey. That is a shame. But, I mean, we're not in a position right now to... to breed animals anyway, to be honest. And here come the goblins. They've discovered the entrance, the hidden, supposedly hidden entrance to uh, Forest Home. And my, there are a lot of them. Definitely not enough for Jurist and team to take on. Especially with all these lashers. Look at them. So let's see what we got. That's not the one. We have 83 others, but let's see if they're all goblins. Well, except for Red Fairface and an Osprey, yes. So 81 invaders. That is incredible considering this was a hidden location and we really haven't done much in the way of wealth generation. So for them to bring such a force against us, and this has become kind of a trend in Enthador, but no one here is really special. They're all just regular goblin troops. We don't have any elite troops or any leaders or anything of that nature. Oh, they brought both crossbowmen and bowmen. Which, shouldn't they technically be crossbow goblin and bow goblin, but hey, whatever. They're not men, right? Regardless, though, there's no way, no way in in the world that we can take on these guys. So we're not gonna. We're just gonna let them hang out out there. They have discovered the location of, uh, of lost knowledge. So no, they are not. They are not the mangy spider. They are the dungeon of urging, or Bosa Smuzla. So now... The Oaken Flags, unfortunately, has two tribes of goblins contesting them. Oh, let's watch the waves crash on the shore. That's beautiful. What is this? Whip vines. Okay. You can make wine out of that. Some really good wine. Alright, so they're just milling about. Whatever animals survived are filtering their way. Although the horses and whatnot are going to die if we don't get them sustenance soon. Let's show you what I did. I've smoothed a lot of stuff out just to make the place look nice. I couldn't smooth this out because there's no way our dwarves can get to it, unfortunately. Later on, maybe I'll build like wooden platforms and let them go and smooth it out, but it's not a high priority. These, however, have been completely smoothed out. 
And then I've got my little underpass here. And I haven't decided. This is going to be a tiny little room, so I haven't decided yet what to put there. I do have my mayor's room all set up. I just need to build a door. Okay. I mean, he's not going to like it, obviously, because it's not really nice. But for the moment, it's all we have. So here is our finished goods system, and I'm pretty proud of it. So these are actually the same stockpile. I just cut out this middle part, but they actually, if you look, they are this. Well, you don't see it blink because they're full, but this is where all of the regular finished goods go. And I've limited it to just the kind we want to trade, like amulets and scepters and crowns and toys and whatnot. So these stockpiles, this one stockpile actually feeds into these two jewelers workshop, who then take these gems, which also feed into them, and then put them on them, and then they move them to here. So if you look at it, if it's working correctly, and I believe it is, all of these are just un unengraved finished goods. But if you go up here, as you can see, these are all encrusted with stuff. So it's working. Now the problem comes when this runs out of space, and eventually I wanted to have all of this be the area, but right now this is our bedroom, our dining room, our brewery, and our lever place, so it is what it is for right now. But eventually I want all this to be a stockpile just like this. But until this fills up, the system works. So we just go down here. And the cool thing is we can tell what kind of gems we have a lot of. So we have a ton of Rubicels, for example. So I could just tell this guy, go down to Rubicel, and I know for a fact that, uh, that he can do a ton of Rubicels. So I'll just get through all that. And I'll do the same here. Go down to Rubicel. And I can't push the uh, repeat button, R, because then what they'll do is they'll encrust the same thing over and over again. And I'd rather not do I understand from a monetary perspective, it, it's the same thing. If you have one item with 15 things encrusting it, it's worth the same as 15 items with, with only one each, but still. All right, so we're going to make this the study of Grimmick's Onyx Blade. And he's not going to like it. Like I said, look at this. He's unhappy. It's modest, and he needs a decent office. So, I'm sorry, buddy. This is the best we can do for right now. I needed the wood because I was making a lot more charcoal. This this fortress, unlike Forest Home, is going to require magma pretty soon. I got a little ahead of myself, and I was flooring this room with copper. I want to at least have one room for our military doors to train. And I figure it's just difficult to have them train while the floor isn't ready yet. So I was trying to fill up the floor, but I might not be able to do it. Let's see if we have any additional copper floors, though. You theoretically can just use copper bars, but I went ahead and made copper blocks. But you can, as you see here with the iron bars, you can make a floor out of bars versus blocks. I honestly don't know what the difference is. But I just figured I'd do it right and make blocks. So we have seven of them, right? So let's do a floor. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. Okay, cool. That'll take the whole thing. And done. So now we have another row of copper flooring in there. Other than that, I've just completely smoothed out the entire dining room. It's all dug out. As you can see, all the Z levels are in place. So that's going to look really nice when we look at it from... Armok Vision. I haven't even started in the library yet. There's other priorities, like for example, our bedrooms that I'm starting to put together, but it's been a slow process. Uh oh. Chief Jeronka. He's already legendary, so let's hope he doesn't die. Let's hope he doesn't need like silk cloth or something that we don't have. No. Well, we don't know yet. He's claimed a workshop. Okay, he's got some wood. What's he going after now? Okay, some kind of fabric, it looks like. No, leather. Interesting. What kind of leather do you have, Chief? He has... Stingray. Stingray leather. Well, that's exotic. Oh, now he's going for something else. Looks like more leather. Or maybe some cloth. Oh, more leather. 
Okay, so this time, in addition to the Stingray Leather, he has Giant Wren Leather. Interesting. So, a wooden and leather object. And, whoops, what is he, where's he going now? All right, a block. He needed a stone block. Interesting. Now it looks like he's going to take metal. I believe those are copper bars. Nope, Electrum. He wants to use... A, why do we have Electrum? Well, we have some brass, too. And we have two Electrum. We have some lay pewter. Zinc. Trifle pewter. Where are we getting all this from? I think some of the dwarves who immigrated in brought that with them. Because we certainly have been producing those random things. Although it does look like we need more of our copper and silver. So let's do that. Let's smelt the tetrahedrite. Until we're out of it. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of it. And I haven't really been digging yet for, for ore. And the problem also is, as we mentioned in a previous episode, a lot of the ore is in places where our city is, like here, right? I'm not going to dig that out, because it'll ruin the whole aesthetics of our city. And I'm certainly not going to dig out our entrance tunnel. Because that's our security. So, I might have to have, like, little mine shafts coming up and, like, digging this stuff out, but I don't really want to. This hasn't really been set up yet. I've kind of abandoned this project, actually, since we have the new death trap down here. Oh, he's ready to go. So, but the bedrooms are a high priority. They really are. And that, I believe, yeah, that's our only carpenter's workshop, so no one's going to be making any beds anytime soon. Craft Stores Workshop, there's not a lot of wood crafts that really you need. Nest boxes, I guess. Everything else on that list that I saw was kind of useless. I don't know the differences between, for example, a wooden jug and a wooden barrel, which you make at a carpenter's workshop. They have wooden pots, too. Like, you can make rock pots. Uh-oh. Stray Blue Peacock, dead. Yes, I know. It happens. I've got this all smoothed out. I have restricted engraving now to only three people so that they can become master engravers. We have Koldnar, we have Valen, and we have Dur. Is that really his name? Yeah, his name is really Dur. All right, so Dur's our best. He right now has 17 stone detailing. He's legendary plus two. Now he's at 18, and Kolnar and Valen are slowly improving in their skills as well. But that's what they're up to. I guess I should start putting the dining room together, but I really want to have cool metal tables. Okay. Alright, so it's a chestnut cage. Now what's neat about this is an artifact cage is completely indestructible. You could fit a dragon inside an artifact wooden cage, and it will not be able to get out. Even if it lights it on fire. I think it's still impervious. So that's an interesting object. Let's see how much it's worth, huh? Let's go to... Uh, there we go. It's called the Angry Board, which I guess is relevant because it's made out of wood. This is a chestnut cage. All crafts dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with stingray leather and encircled with bands of rectangular diorite cabochons. On the item is an image of dwarves in chestnut. The dwarves are laboring. The artwork relates to the foundation of lost knowledge. Finally! Chief Jeronka knows what's up. He actually made an artifact that commemorates the founding of lost knowledge and not like three pairs <laughs> by the scribe of destiny of the Oaken Flags in the early spring of 166. On the item is an image of Splattered Savage, the Kobaltite Crown in giant wren leather. On the item is an image of Odom, Axe Fasten, the Dwarf, and Shale. On the item is an image of Dwarves. The Dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of Dagger Sprinkle by the Halls of Learning of the Oaken Flags in 68. Wow, the Halls of Learning. That must be very similar to the Scribe of Destiny who came to find Lost Knowledge. Maybe Dagger Sprinkle was the original Lost Knowledge before Lost Knowledge was even conceived. It was, however, a hundred years ago. I wonder if it still stands. We don't know. We don't know. 
So I guess what I could start doing now is I could move the the brewing operation down to where it should be since it's been cleared of stones. So let's see here. Where is it? We want a still. Actually, we want two stills. So we're going to put one here. And we're going to put one here. And while we're doing that, we're not really going to use them yet, but let's put our kitchens. Put one here. And one there. Excellent. So our stills and our kitchens are put together. That's really unfortunate that there were two, like, gems here or something that caused this one little piece to be white while the rest is, is gray. But you do what you can. I should start putting something in here. This is going to be, I guess, where we're going to put our artifacts and whatnot, so I should put the cage in there. But I think I might want to use the cage. And I don't even know where our other artifacts are. As long as they don't leave the fortress, I'll deal with them later. Actually, didn't I say that I was going to dig this out a bit more? I don't know, though. I don't really know if I, it needs to. I think it looks better if it's symmetrical. Eventually, this is going to be smoothed out as well. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you think I should maybe dig this out all the way to the edge. Make these rooms a little bit longer than these rooms. Or if it's fine just to leave it the way it is. Like, for example, I left this. I left little spaces of undug area here. And I think it looks just fine. I think it looks cool, actually. This, again, I might turn into something. Like, I might have some water fall down here from... From here. So I might have it come, like, the... I might have this come around, like, here. And then go down here. Although... It's kind of in a bad placement, because most of the space is above it. Yeah, so I, I could have it go like around and up like this. I'd have to put another floodgate there, though, because I eventually want this to come into some like giant room. I could just let this go down, and then build like another water switchboard, like down here, and have like multiple floodgates coming in different directions, so I could move water wherever I want to. This whole floor, for example, could be like a, a sewage floor. I don't know. I'm not the best with water. Like in Forest Home, I did some cool stuff. I was able to get that perpetual waterfall, but... Since we're under a giant ocean, I just need to be a little careful with water on this one. Alright, so let's see what else am I doing here. I expanded the furniture stockpile. Now that I know how to make stockpiles in weird shapes and make them effective. And but this eventually has to go. This is like still my everything stockpile. And there's a lot of random seeds here. Oops. Seeds are kind of a pain in the butt. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to, when I get my giant farm put together, I'm going to have, I'm going to allow bags, hopefully. But I'm not going to allow barrels. But I'm not sure how to do that. Obviously, there's the seeds here are being left straight. But I think that might just be because we don't have bags. So I might have to have a pigtail, a giant pigtail cloth producing situation. And I've done that before. I think uh, Anvil Quest had a pretty good cloth industry going, but... Alright, well while we're waiting out the siege, what we should do is we should explore the cavern system. Now what I was thinking is I was thinking of having two ways down into the caverns. I was thinking of having a military one that's very small. It was purpose is just to explore and then once we understand the caverns and the relative size of them then we'll have a legitimate way down from somewhere i don't know maybe we'll have like a little staircase like here we'll fit it somewhere but it'll be like that'll be the civilian way down to get to our magma layer when we eventually reach there so actually we could plan for that right now so this is ammo armor weapons we could put it like right here because there's nothing really... I mean, the only thing else I was going to do with this hallway right here is put statues or something. So actually, this is, could we can put like a little uh, protective drawbridge here? That's possible. I think that's a good idea, actually. So let us put a... Downstair. Here. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll build... Well, we don't really need a drawbridge, because we can put 
hatches above it. And if the hatches are locked, nothing will get through anyway. But I do want to make it seem secure. So what we could do is we could build some walls here out of our shale blocks. And they can... Or actually, what... Oops. What is this? This is diorite. So we can do it with our diorite blocks. Presuming we have some. Yep, we do. Plenty. That way it won't look out of place. Then we'll put a door there as well. I mean, the hatches are what's really going to stop, like, the Forgotten Beasts or whatnot. But the door, you know, it just looks secure. Even if it truly isn't. But right now, I'm pretty confident the Jurist and team can handle whatever's down there in the caverns at this moment. Alright, these dwarves are industrious and they move fast. I like that about them. Let's do a shale door. It'll have a darker color. It'll look nice. Alright, but that means we're going to need... Some hatch covers. Six, to be exact. Okay, perfect. And actually, now that the Chief is uh, done doing his thing, we should probably make some beds. And actually, now that our now that our mayor has his office, we can also make him the manager. Where are you, Grimix? There's Brick. There's Grimix. Okay. So now I could also do the manager screen, which is fine. Meanwhile, the problem with this is you have to keep setting it over and over again. You can't just tell it to keep doing it. So let's do EG, AEG. And you can't do this in the manager screen either, unfortunately. So you just have to periodically look over here and do it. I wish there was a way you could just have this set perpetually, but again, as I said, if you have it set on repeat, they'll just simply encrust the same object over and over again. It's a bug that's been through 15 versions. This is the kind of game where they like to add features more than they really like to fix bugs. Which, seriously, if I was a game developer, that's exactly what I'd want to do too, so <laughs> I can't blame them for that. All right, up downstairs. And let's go down maybe one, two, three, four, five. Five floors and see what's going on. What was that? Oh, the raven. The goblins are fighting a raven. Well, fine, as long as they're not fighting us. This one went down pretty far, but didn't discover anything. So I'm starting to worry that that one's just in a bad place. Maybe this one will be in a better place. Come on, guys, let's dig this. What else are you doing? It's because they're not in my burrow. Let's, uh, currently painting. And we'll go down, 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 down. Great. Alright. Now they should get to work. And lo, they are. Well, more gems. That's always good. Wow, good gems. Emerald. Ooh, fancy. And then we have Rose Quartz and Amethyst. More Emerald. Well, that was fortunate. But still, we haven't found anything. So let's do D-I. And let's go down another five. And W. Dig, my little dwarfs. Dig. If the caverns really are super low, that'll help us immeasurably. Because it'll give us plenty of space to do what we need to do. Oh, what's this? Cobaltite? Nice. It must be pretty common, because we had tons of cobaltite at uh, Forest Home, too. And we hardly did any digging whatsoever. Is that... Microcline? 
Interesting. Still no, still no caverns though. See, that's the cool thing about Forest Home, really, is that we don't need to go on the surface. I mean, right now in the early stages, we probably should have some access to it for traders and whatnot, but this is supposed to be a completely underground fort. Lots of microcline. But still no caverns. I'm just I'm getting the feeling that we're just completely missing these caverns. Let's see in general what uh where we are. Like, in the grand scheme of things. Okay. So, essentially... Wow, the fort looks really nice when you look at it zoomed out. That is that is a beautiful fort. And when we have the temple, or whatever, up here... We could fit something over here. It'll look even better. And the bedroom area, of course, can expand. Because this is... Nothing's going to be really done here. Maybe some mining up here if we need to get metals and whatnot, but this is all safe area. This is the bottom of the ocean right here, which is awesome. That's just, this is a great fort. I love the look of it. Anyway, the point I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to... The way the caverns are set up, they're generally open in the middle of the squares, but can they close on the edge of the squares? I think I just happened to hit another square edge. I'm not entirely sure. This is four squares, I think, wide. So it'll be one, two, well, this could be in the middle of the third square. Well, regardless, ladies and gentlemen, that will be the end of this episode. I will continue to press ahead despite the goblin invasion at our doorstep. And I'll come back if we find anything cool, if we discover the caverns, or if anything interesting happens. So once again, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.